welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We are the automotive edgelords, taking you to the brink of automotive purity, but never tipping you over the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. I'm the only automotive edgelord. I'd trim your hedges. Oh my God. On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are going to be working on the 180. I don't know what's happening. It doesn't matter what's happening. All I know is this car is friggin' awesome, and we're gonna get there. <laughs> Stop trying to be professional. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. We're getting that 180 working. Have we got it working already? Yeah, kind of. Now we're doing it again. We put a bunch of sensors and stuff in there. We fixed up our. It. Sorry, I can't do it. Can't do what? Can't, <laughs> Just... can't do what? Because you don't want to do the Mighty Car Mods anymore. Oh, let's do, go do that other thing we're going to do. Sorry, I'm hedging? so unprofessional. Hedging? No, Martin, get back to it. Yeah, we're going to do the garden edging. Garden edging. What? Garden edging. Martin, go. Sorry. We're going to um, make our stuff work. We put a new sensor thing in there and a new thing on the thing with the thing. And now we're going to make sure it works in the thing. Uh, also, uh, the car got painted. We it put it back did. together. Um, it's amazing. Uh, today, we got seats going in. We got steering wheel going in. We're going to go to the dyno. Unless we don't, I might just tell you that we're going to and then I won't. I'd like to go to the dyno. Do it, but I think excellent. we are. Uh, steering wheel, a bunch of things to finish off. We got Dave from Haltech here. He's going to check. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> He's going to check some triggering. He's going to check and some he's going stuff to make sure the and whole make sure that it works. And the optical 360 degree 24 minus ones. That's actually true because if you get one little bit of dirt or grime on there, on that wheel, the triggering won't work properly. Well, or the EC will get the... No, because it'll get the shits. It'll it get doesn't upset. make it better, but it's an improvement. <laughs> no, it's an improvement, but it's not better. Either way, the car's going to work. Again, we want 180 kilowatts. Dave's here to make sure we get our 180 kilowatts at the wheels. Not one kilowatt more, not one kilowatt less. 40 kilowatts more. Let's get into it. I just found another dollar. This really is the car that keeps giving. Time to put the seats in the bin because they've been injected with rectal slime for almost three decades. With the seats out, this is the perfect opportunity to give the inside of the car and the carpet a good clean and see what other treasures may be hidden down below. I will need some of the seatbelt components from the factory seats, such as the seatbelt clips. Luckily, no tools are required. They were so loose, I can remove them by hand. Safety first, kids. Now we can also get our ECU checked and fired up, and Dave from Haltech is here to make sure that everything is working exactly as it should. Our electrical stuff is now done. We've got our air temp sensor plumbed in. Dave's been tapping away at the keyboard, changing our triggering type. Now we find out if our new sensor that we put in is actually going to work, see if the car will start. Our trigger system appears to be working. The timing light looks good. Now it's time to hear this thing. Yep. Get keen. That's right. All right, people. Thank Here you. we go. Forgot your kill switch. Yeah. Excellent. So excellent. I hope the check engine light is meant to be on. I checked, there's an engine. The car is running, it's sounding good, that is excellent. It works enough to be able to get it to the dyno. Next up, it's time to do some of the extra pieces, including the interior. So this here, um, we got a couple uh, of seats. These are a Caro SR3s, which I believe came factory in some Civics, like EK Civics and DC2 Type R Integras or something. Uh, we got these for $40,000. And they look like that. They are in really good condition. And um, that there is the, uh, I think that one there is the driver's side seat. And then over here in this box, we've got some rails. So seats are going in. Uh, I've just been giving the interior a little bit of a clean up under the seats. I was considering changing the carpet. Uh, it actually doesn't need changing. It's in really good condition. It's nice and black, which is what I'd want to change it to if it was that kind of festy 80s gray. 
but it's not. So uh, seats go on, rails go on, then I got a steering wheel, gear knob, some other little interior bits. Then I've also had to arrive um, the pods that we were missing last time. These, which go on the front bar like this. So these were the pieces we were missing last time, so they go on there. Uh, Trung has painted those as well. And then the other thing that I have is the uh, risers, razors for the Type X bar for that to go on. So we, we are getting close. We are getting close. There's just lots of little bits and pieces. Um, but we're just going to dive in, get the seats in, get the steering wheel done, and then we'll move on to the exterior stuff. As well as all of the mechanical updates that we've done so far, the interior of the car is also getting a freshen up, starting with replacing the factory steering wheel with something brand new. We've got a whole video with step-by-step -step instructions on how to change a steering wheel, which you can check out on our channel. There are heaps of options and it's made easier with this car because there's no airbags. To make the new wheel fit, an adapter kit is required and then your aftermarket steering wheel will mount to this. With the new steering wheel installed, now I can move onto the seats. Using seats in a car that were not designed for it usually requires the use of adapter rails. These convert the factory seat mounting positions on the car to the mounts on the seats. Well, they're meant to, but they don't always fit, and you may need a pry bar, hammer, drill, or even a welder, depending on what your setup requires, to make these fit. Bolt-on doesn't always mean bolt-on. There are loads of cheap and fake seats available, but for a build like this, it was really important for me to have genuine seats that are quality. Recaros like this are expensive, even secondhand, but they are totally worth it because they're some of the best seats available, and I'm stoked to have such awesome quality in my 180. The seats are in and they look freaking amazing, and the car is starting to look just like the poster, which was drawn before the car was even built. These posters are only available while this build series is on. If you don't have one yet, grab it now and we'll autograph it and send it to your door anywhere in the world. Next up, it's time to install the Type X bumper pods, which I managed to get as genuine items that were already here locally in Australia. I'm also changing out this slime covered Nismo knob for a brand new one that is exactly the same design because I really like it. The seats, steering wheel and gear knob are done and the test sit is a massive success. Now it's time to install the piece de resistance, the Type X wing. Dude, this is the cherry on the cake. It is the sweet the cherry, cherry pie. On the top. I'll put it over the holes. You put Hold it on. over your holes. Yep. Hold on. No, I'll put it. Just let go for a sec. Yep. No, no, let go. Is yours lined up? No, mine's, that's lined up on my side. Line yours up on the holes. All right, I'll just let go of it. Yeah, but now... That's, that's right. That looks good on this side. We are back in Super Garage now because the length of the exhaust is not correct with our Vertex bar. You can see just the, from the short amount of time we've been starting it that there is turning all black, but not in a good way. Speaking of good things, you asked for it. We finally have it. Chopped hoodies. It's got chopped fingers on the front. It's got chopped fingers on the back. They are available right now, so you can pick them up on the shop. What are we doing? We're chopping off the exhaust. We're modifying it. We're going to weld some new bits on. This twin pipe, I do kind of like Me the too. OEM plusness of Me that. Too. It just doesn't fit. Now, look, 
We could try and cut it and trim it and something else. I don't know if that would work, but we bought a couple of components. I got a Canon, it's what I used to have. So I just, I want to put that on there because I think it's going to be cool and then maybe I can swap back to something like that later. This is not a specific 180SX exhaust. This has been built, which is good and bad. Sides are some mild steel bits in there that are kind of a little bit rusty, but it doesn't matter. It'll last just nice, nicely and fine. Uh, this is just an aftermarket muffler that someone's made to fit. It fit the old car really well. This one is specifically for a 180, but we're probably going to have to move the mounts. Yeah, so these are going to have to move back. It's got some silencer in there that's going to go... In the bin! And so then... Um, we also here... do have this muffler though, so that's a good thing. So we're going to try and keep that muffler so that... Because if you just go turbo on this, it'll be so loud you wake the dead. Uh, if we keep another muffler in there, it should actually be pretty good. And it's got a cat as well. That's where that is set to mount. We actually need it more like yeah. that. Because the black up the bumper look doesn't look no, cool, it's, does it's it? No, it's not cool. So this here is about get to get chopped, eh? Chopped, eh? Check it out on the Mighty Car Mod Shop, link below. Recipro saw that, chop that off, zot it on, cut these off. We're gonna cut and weld some stuff and then oh, the exhaust is gonna be It's also got like done. a world's worst power steering leak, so we're getting a hose made to fix that. Yeah, that's it's why there's a trade everywhere. out there, it's just dropping stuff everywhere, <laughs> but you know. At least, it, we know that now, because it's running. All right, let's chop. We're going to be adapting our new exhaust parts to fit our existing system, which in my experience is actually way harder than making a whole new one from scratch. Obviously a bolt-on system is the ultimate in ease of install, assuming it actually does bolt-on. Welding old metal to new metal and getting all the angles right takes a bit of trial and error, but I reckon I can make this work with the help of the hoist and some stands. We'll send the old muffler to the big metal shredder where it can be turned into a can of beans, and then we'll cut the mounts off the new cannon. This will allow us to place the muffler exactly where it needs to be in the bumper cutout and then work back towards the existing exhaust system. A whole lot of eyeballing ensures that the muffler looks good in its final position. We're roughing in the angle of the cannon and the position left to right, then tack welding the hangers back onto the muffler. Next, I'm going to cut up a bunch of 3-inch bends to join the cannon to the rest of the exhaust. Some careful measuring and tacking is the key to getting this right. But sometimes you do get it wrong and a quick hit with an angle grinder can break the tacks and you can try again. Once it all looks right, I'm going to run a few welds on each join so it doesn't move when I take it off and weld the whole thing together. I'll be using a MIG because it's fast and the whole thing is going to be painted. The exhaust is done and it is a fruit salad of a pipe. If you have a look down here, there is basically every food group here yep. of all colors, sizes, distinctions, yep. and smells, yep. starting from the butthole of the turbo. Exactly right. And then we do our catalytic converter, which is cool. Got our dump pipe and our flex joint. Uh, why didn't we just get a new one? Um, well, yeah, you can't. And if you can, they're made like quite cheap, really thin material. The mufflers don't muffle. They, they, actually, I think they just end up making the car sound like shit. And I thought this car sounded pretty good with the muffler yeah. that was on it. I mean, if you're gonna go a full system, you just get JDM legit is what I wanted to do. Yeah. You just like, you get the whole thing. Uh, that was not possible in the time frame yeah. that we had. This here is functional. It's a three inch turbo yes. back system. Um, and it appears to be <laughs> custom made for this car. And there are so many pieces. I'm, I'm kind of good with that. Having custom made some exhausts and known how difficult it is, but knowing that they just fit really well. Like this just, it fits great. And yes, okay, there's a bit of surface rust on it, but there's no holes in it. It's not leaking anything. This um, is how many components function. there are, Martin. One, two, three, four, five, yep. six, seven, different. eight, different. nine, different. 10, yep. 11, yep. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 parts. A 17 piece Which exhaust. You could argue that the amount of welding required to stitch this together probably would have cost more in gas than a whole exhaust. But happy with it. It's going to work. It's going to sound good. It's going to muffle enough so it's not going to offend everyone and it's going to be good. All right. Ten. So um, we've just got a little repair to do at the front for the power steering. And then, Martin, 
We're off to the dyno yeah. to make our 100 and 80 kilowatts. Once the car's working, we also have to get it made legal for street use because it's been unregistered for so long. This involves an authorised inspection to make sure that it's safe, it meets design and safety standards, and a check for tyres, body condition, working lights, indicators, horn and dash, engine leaks, seat belts, and a brake efficiency test. Only then can we get number plates, insurance, and registration. Because I've updated the rear lights, they no longer work with the factory loom plugs, so I need to re-solder old style plugs onto the new lights. This is fairly simple because even though the updated lights are a new design, most of the wire colours have stayed the same, so it's just a matter of mixing and matching. And with that done, the lights and indicators are now all working. The 180 has just left on a truck to go out to Haltech and tomorrow we're going to be hitting the dyno to try and get our 100 and 80 kilowatts at the wheels. We're going to get there. We're going to get 180. Now, it's worth remembering also that a stock SR is not something that's going to make a thousand horsepower by itself. You've got to have the world's biggest turbo and your power band looks like a slippery And we don't want a thousand no, anyway. We want I want a 180. Nice, meaty, useful, streetable amount of power. Now, it is true when doing a project like this that 80% of the work does usually happen in the first 20% of the time and the same is inversely true that the last 20% of getting it finished is 80% of the time. It doesn't look like much just rewiring the lights, it's hours to make sure it actually works and that is part of the process of when the car goes through a blue slip which is, blue slips where they actually make sure it's all the engine numbers and chassis numbers it are correct. It makes sure right? it matches, so if something's dropped out of registration or it's a new car that needs to be registered, there's a bunch of checks it goes through. It's a bit more, it's a bit harder because in New South Wales where we live we get like yearly checks and then a blue slip is one that's like checks absolutely everything. Like if you've had a new detail. engine or something exactly. as well in detail and then after that is the pink slip that I think now is called an e-safety where that's they're going to check the uh, indicators, the brakes, they actually drive the car and do a brake test, they make sure there's no leaks, any of that. So we have to make sure the car can actually meet all of those standards as well. That is going to take a little bit of time before we can get the number plates, mm -hmm. before we can get the CTP and the insurance exactly. and then the registration. Yeah. It's big, big to jump through. If, you it's know, big. It's better if you don't let your car drop out of rego, but something like this that's been sitting for a long time, it's going to cost you over a thousand bucks to keep it regoed. So sometimes people go, I'd rather just go through that pain in five years' time than pay five thousand bucks worth of rego. So that's where we're at. Yeah. But it is going to be good. Thank you, of course, to everybody that's been following along the journey so far up to this point. I did mention during the episode the 180SX posters that we have available that we're signing them. They're only available while this project is happening, which I would suggest there's only one or two more yeah. episodes left yep. so if We're you don't there. have one yet uh, then uh, now is the time to grab one we will sign it and we'll send it to you anywhere in the world I don't even want to start talking about the next project yet because we got to get this one finished but there are some very exciting so things happen I would say almost Martin getting back to some very old school rivalries is all I'm gonna yeah, say absolutely that's what I'm gonna say uh, thank you very much for watching chopped hoodies you can get them right now anything else Martin nope Great. I'm hungry. See hey. you next time. 180SX on the dyno. Thanks for watching. See you, you then. You said this would be like three episodes. Yes. Is it more than that? Uh, it's not as many as yours. You know how when I say it's going to be three episodes. No, it's, it's like actually 12. 30 episodes. Yeah, yeah I yeah. know. But yours is, this is going to be what, like six? Uh, yeah. Who knows? Six. Man. Uh, seven.